So today we started day one of this giant hoarding job. This is a little bit what the inside looks like, so we called the dumpster to have it delivered over here. And then we just got started throwing things from the garage in these giant root bins. We also found a couple of these mice carcasses, which is not uncommon for these type of jobs. But yeah, it was pretty straightforward. All we really had to do was fill up these bins and just start throwing everything in there away. And obviously we were looking out for wills and stock certificates and important documents like that. We actually ended up finding the title to the car, which she was super grateful to have. But honestly, we were not expecting for this to really take all day and fill up the entire dumpster. It was literally a one car garage. We honestly thought we were gonna get started on the rest of the house. But since it was so densely packed in the garage, we ended up filling a lot more than we thought. So this is the entire dumpster filled to the very top, packed in, and this is the box truck as well. All right, so here we go on day two of this giant hoarder muck out. And man, was there a lot to do today. On day one, all we were able to do was just a single car garage. And that by itself filled up an entire 40 yard dumpster. And judging by the size of this thing, I'm really nervous if we're gonna finish. But either way, we get started by taking the stuff on top out first. That just keeps us safe so it doesn't avalanche and fall all over us. But the main strat for taking care of these giant projects is by using shovels and just going one bit at a time. It's honestly quite overwhelming when you see that much stuff and it feels like it'll never get done. But if these jobs have taught me anything, it's just that you have to start somewhere, right? Now this house is what we call a level four hoard. Now there's five levels and the only reason why this isn't a level five is because the integrity of the house still remains intact. Now I know someone's already writing in the comments that we're throwing away good quality stuff, but the truth of the matter here is that everything was actually covered in rodent feces, so we were not allowed to keep it. Now me and mom here are actually working on the kitchen together. We really do make a good team and honestly, I kind of like working with my mom, it's fun. But we ended up filling up an entire dumpster and we still have a lot more to do. So this is where we were at the start of day two. By the end of the day, we had cleared out the entire living room, but that still left us with the entire upstairs bedroom and the second guest room. So we just had to go ahead and get started going from the top to bottom first. That's just because the risk for an avalanche to happen was actually pretty high on this job. After that, we formed a chain grabbing everything piece by piece to take it down to the living room. There were three flights of stairs, so we found out the best way to do it was to fill up the second floor and then work together as a team to bring it all the way down to the dumpster. So once we unloaded all the big stuff, we finished up getting all the tiny pieces into bags, and this is what the final result looked like for this bedroom. But that still left us with the entire guest room, which was super packed up and dense. What was difficult about this room was picking up all the food, which was super heavy. It basically makes the bags super hard to carry down. But by the end of the day, we ended up filling not one, not two, but three full 40-yard dumpsters, plus two entire box trucks. Also, thanks to everyone who's been watching the series. Hope you guys aren't afraid of rats or have claustrophobia for that matter, because today we're going into a crawl space. So the crawl space is that area under your home you hopefully never have to go down. But every now and then, rats like to get in there and make a whole mess of the place. So the guy who called us today was asking for help because his crawl space full of rat carcasses was kind of stinking up the home. So I go ahead and get started by pulling up the vapor barrier and here is our first rat's nest. We found about a dozen of those all throughout the crawl space. So we bagged up everything we saw and we started hauling it outside of the home. Probably the most difficult thing about these jobs is just how cramped the crawl spaces are. They're honestly just so awkward to move around. But once it got all bagged up, we threw it in the box truck and started spraying down the support pilings to get rid of that odor smell. And then we started rolling down fresh and clean vapor barrier for him. After that, we stapled everything into the ground so it wouldn't budge. And here is the finished result. And trust me, it smells a whole lot better down there. But honestly, my friends, I really- This is by far the worst freezer we've ever done. Basically, meat and seafood was left in here for 10 plus years without any power. So we start the job off by sucking up all the water and meat juices that was left in there, and then we triple bag all the rotten meat and seafood into these bags and put them into the box truck. Now, I've never actually thrown up from a job before, but this one made me take a step back to breathe before I yacked up my entire breakfast. But nothing me and the bio boys can't handle. So once we got the freezer in the box truck, the source of the odor was eliminated, and I did a quick little spray through with our chem. But I'm serious when I tell you that why do I do what I do? I've been getting asked this question quite a bit from you guys lately, and it makes perfect sense. It's a very strange career path for sure, and the reason why I got into it is because I knew the business owner who had started the company out here. He let me help out on a couple of projects early on, and I just fell in love with this type of work. It's one of those careers where you feel like you make an actual, tangible difference in people's lives. Like, I'm so incredibly lucky and blessed to be able to help people experiencing some of the most traumatic events in their life, but... Rodent feces cleanups are nasty. They smell awful and it can actually be toxic to your lungs if you breathe it in. So here I'm fogging the room with a virus side which kills off like over 100 different viruses. And then I use the vacuum with the HEPA filter to suck up all the rodent droppings. This job was actually pretty straightforward because the client wanted all the contents of the shed completely emptied out. I was honestly a little concerned because I thought there would be some mice running around in the shed, but that didn't happen because they were actually dead. So here is the first rat that we found in the insulation. So we just bag it up, sweep up all the remaining insulation bits and rodent feces, Toss it in the bag and chuck it out. Now there's a special disposal process for things like has waste, and so we put it into bins so we could throw away later. And to finish up, I just put down our deodorizer and then I mopped up the entire floor. But honestly, I sure do hope none of this happens to you guys because 
For some reason, this freezer we did today smells just as bad as this freezer. For some reason, we've been getting a lot of freezer calls just because junk removal companies don't want to deal with the smell. Luckily for us, our company is equipped to deal with such smelly things. So here we're just duct taping the whole thing shut so it doesn't accidentally open up. Please know that I